I just thank you so much for this class that you have for us tonight. Father, for those who are still trying to come, I just ask that you protect them. If you're here this evening, Father, I just ask that you would touch them in a special way for those who are ill tonight. Father, I pray that you would send your healing to them. And Father, we just give them rest and help them so they can come. Just lay everything aside and to receive your healing. Father, I thank you um, for the word that you give us. I ask you, Father, for your help in delivering your message and letting the other one understand. I ask you, Father, to touch each and every single person in this class in a personal way to me. Father, I ask that you would guide them in all of their decisions. I ask that you would help them in the name of Jesus. Okay, so. Um, I was struggling a lot with God and I decided I'm going to see it tonight. So um, I hope it's okay. We're getting into Revelation. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. There's a Revelation tonight. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, the, the tendency that we have, especially depending on how you grew up, the tendency that we have uh, towards the book of Revelation is that it's something that's future events, something that we can't quite use today because it has to do with you know, future events. But if you look very carefully, it says, and John is the apostle that's writing this. And the apostle John was the one apostle who outlived everyone else. They did everything they could to tell him. They tried to stop him. They tried to boil him in oil. And he still would not die. He had that much life in him. But you know what's really interesting is what the name John actually means. The name John means grace. So you can't kill grace. Okay. Now what they did is they put him on an island to try to stop him. But you know what happened when they put him on an island? We got to the revelation. Which is directly for the church. So it's very interesting about um, all of this. The book of Revelation is the last book. Genesis is the first book, but I'm going to show you a connection between those two tonight. I'm sorry, Chris, did you have a question? Or are you using something? Well, because besides the stone age, besides the war and the oil, he also died with the four times, so he got that done twice. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. Can stop them because you can't stop this. You can't stop this. Yeah, out of all out of all of the disciples, John was the one who was the longest one. Okay. How did he end up running? Old age. Really? <laughs> he was ready to go. He was tired. He was done. He went peacefully. Out of all the apostles that I learned about, he was the only one that did not have his life taken from him. Or that he was not martyred for uh, the word of God. So that shows you a lot about very soon as we thought. Um, so the scripture verse that we're kind of looking at tonight, and this is what we're going to answer in all of our studies. If the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? What do you see so far? Who is it talking about? Who is it talking about? Mm -hmm. People the righteous. Yeah. The righteous. The same ones. The righteous. Us. So if our foundations are destroyed, what can we do? So this begs the question what foundation are we talking about? What foundation is your faith based on? Remember, Jesus talked about uh, the house that was built on the same. <coughs> There was a house that was built on the rock, and the house that was built on the sand. And the house that was built on the sand, the waves came in, the winds came in, it crushed the house, right? Destroyed it. But the house that was built on the rock, it stood, it felt strong. So what's sand? Sand is your knowledge. Sand is a picture of whether or not you, um, 
Sand is a picture of whether or not um, you have a solid foundation. If you look at the difference between rock and the difference between sand, sand is going to shift around. So this is what the law does to you. You shift around according to how good you are for that day, right? How bad you are for that day. You want to base who you are on whether or not you've done what God has called you to do. Do you need a Bible or a paper or anything like that? Yes. Okay. We have some extra Bibles on the table. Um, I have some paper and I have some Bibles. For those who just walked in, we're going to get into Revelation tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know <laughs> Revelation chapter 5. Mm -hmm. So, um, but really what I'm looking at, okay, so you're safe, right? You have Jesus as your saved, and you still don't want to squeeze the language that crap in your life. You have a lot of obstacles facing you. You've got poverty, bills you can't pay, children you have to provide for, food you put on the table, right? Your car's breaking down, relationships in the mess. Am I speaking to anybody here tonight? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is going to apply to you, and this is going to be something that you're going to be able to refer back to on a consistent basis, because if you understand this, your foundation will not be destroyed. You understand what I'm saying? So how do we know we're righteous? Let's answer that question first. So then we have um, other person sitting on the train to get to set it. I have an extra here for you yeah. Is that enough or do you need one? Um, this should be enough. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think I have some in here. Um, so we want to answer the question what makes us righteous? We talk a lot about uh, grace and we talk a lot about the law here. So the one thing I want you to understand is who you are. Because one of the things that we just learned, and I know this is probably more for me when we talked about it um, yesterday. One of the things that we uh, discussed in one of our uh, recent things was where uh, Amalek came from. One of the enemies that Israel had. And Israel had this enemy come and attack them in Rephidim, which is what we found out was a place of rest. So when you're resting, this enemy will come and attack you. This we didn't really discuss the last time is that this enemy that came after them while they were resting wasn't one of the enemies that was in their promised land. It was completely different. So remember that, Amalek. Who was it? Doubt. Yeah. Okay. So when you rest, that doubt wants to pop up and it wants to eat you alive. That's what the word battle, do battle. In Hebrew, it literally means to eat you up. So doubt wants to eat you up and keep you proceeding into your promised land. Right? But what did we learn the week before that? What happened to the Israelites as they were coming out? What was coming after them? What was chasing them when they stopped in front of the Red Sea? All of Pharaoh's army. Right? Everything we had before. And since you're new to the class, we do a lot of Hebrew, a lot of Greek in here. So if there's anything that you don't understand, I love questions. Stop asking me. Okay. I want you to get it before you ask. I want you to be blessed and have a good day. And to be every time you have your life. Because that's what Jesus said. He does for me, right? And if you're not raining, it's because you don't understand the truth of God. So that's what you teach in this class. Take the tools that you need. To see those changes and those promises in your life, so you can walk out of it and you can be a testimony to others about how it happens. My job is to empower you. So if you are saying something, ask them. Okay? Um, so, one of the things that uh, we found out for our class is that in Hebrew, and that's the word, literally means distress. So, God wanted to deliver us from stress. I never think that he does not want to be able to be trusted. He specifically came to deliver the trust. 
or from from stress. So what happened now? They left to stress, right? Do you remember the covenant you were talking about with Abraham? No, I don't have the covenant. So did did God keep his covenant? Did God keep his covenant? What were they doing for God to take their covenant? They're resting, right? They stop in his green pastures. And God told them to stop because it continues to end it with the rest of them. If there's any one principle that we need to remember in our life, because when you rest, God can work. Okay? God can't get the glory if you're doing everything. It's because I'm fasting. It's because I'm praying. It's because I'm doing this. It's because I'm doing that. It's because I'm getting to the core. It's because this, because because then it's all you and it's all your works. Because you're trying to be a good person and you're trying to do everything that you've been taught. Religion teaches us to do. God really tells us to rest. And if you look in Hebrews chapter 4, there's only one thing that God tells us to be afraid of in the, in the new covenant. The one thing He tells us to be afraid of is to not rest. Because in the Old Testament, it talks about getting into the land. But God said, I swore in my oath, they would not enter my rest. That's your promise, then. Resting and letting God be free. So that's what we need to kind of build a little bit more on. How do we rest if we have doubt? Right? How do we rest when doubt's coming back to us and talking us? So let's take a look at some more cool stuff. And when you understand what the enemy is after to destroy your foundation, then you know what he's doing, you know how to stop him, and you know how to live before the sun. So is everybody okay with this? Can I raise this? Okay. Does everybody have a Bible tonight? Anybody need a Bible? Need a Bible? I teach out a New King James Version, so yours might say something a little different. But, um, it should be about the same thought processes. Okay. So, in Revelation chapter 5, I didn't know that. we're going to read a little bit and then I'm going to start breaking it down little by little. Okay. Um, that's the first I'm sorry, chapter 6. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Um, I'm telling I'm just going to throw it off for a loop tonight. Okay. Now, here's one thing I want to kind of discuss with you. When we look at um, what's happening in the book of Revelation, how many of y'all have heard about the seals in school, all that? You know, when the seals are removed, bad things started to happen. Right? 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 Okay. Well, one of the things I want to help you with, number one, when you look at the context, John is crying. He's crying. Why is he weeping? Why is he crying? Because no one could remove the seals. Okay? Like once they start, they're, they're done. Like it's, the that, it's because something is sealed up with these seals. And as long as the seals are on there, the saints are crying. You understand know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if something is sealed up, that means that something's not released from okay. it. So God is wanting to release something for you, which is why Jesus is going to come now and he's going to remove the seals. And as each seal is removed, things are going to be happening. But this is where I want you to take assurance because it's not for you to be upset this time. Are the seals breaking? Broke? Are seals broken? And there are broken seals. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. and I'm still learning a little bit more about the seals, and we'll get into that a little more. But right now, I want to kind of answer the question that we have on the board. Okay. And this is going to answer some things for you. And I know we touched a little bit about this in some of the first classes that we had. So I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit more, and I want to show you something really awesome that God showed me. So let's start reading through it in chapter 6. Now when I saw the Lamb, now when I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, what I'm just talking about. Now, and the other thing you can look at too throughout the Bible, when it talks about the seal, it has to do with spirits. Okay? So it says that we were sealed by the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. 
That means that the seals are actually spirits that are holding on to something. And the Holy Spirit seals us. So this is this is this is how it works. Once you're saved, you're always saved. And if you don't want to be saved anymore, tough luck. You're saved. You can't lose your salvation. God is calling from his gifts that you're invocable. He says he seals you with the Holy Spirit. So that means that a Christian cannot be possessed. You understand what I'm saying? You can be oppressed, but you can't be possessed. You understand? Okay, and oppression is something that comes from the outside. Possession is something that takes you from the inside. So what the enemy wants to do is if he can destroy that foundation, he can oppress you from the outside because you don't know who you are. Who are the oppressed people? Usually slaves. Usually people who are down, who don't have strength. People who are strong can't be oppressed. See what I'm saying? So if you are dealing with some type of Math is something. Something that's usually out of the ordinary. It's a spirit of God. Okay? For the fun of you. Okay. And a lot of what I teach in here comes from my going through my stuff. And I teach what I learned to get out of it. So when you have something that's super fantastic, super big, super huge, something that's not, you know, easy to get out of, you can't work the way out of it. You can't have a second job, you can't do any of these types of things. It's an oppressive thing that's happening. And the, uh, the enemy is the one who oppresses. God is not oppressed. I am God of his bipolar. He only has a Christian and he's the one that told me that he got saved in his Bible college. Okay. And a lot of the time he was okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he was in the service for four years and they were going to do the risk. He was a chaplain there. Okay. And, and then he went to the post office for uh, 25 years. Mm -hmm. But he would have occasional bouts where he would try to make care of himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, can we stop and break that down for a minute? Is that okay? Can we that? Okay. Um, I teach a lot about the garden, and the garden shows us our emotions. That's why this class is kind of called emotional health, because if we can be the feelings, we can be the feelings. Because okay. um, a lot of our, a lot of our uh, choices that we make in life, a lot of the things that we do kind of the way we feel. We live out of our feelings. If we can conquer our feelings, we can work with this rather than this. You see what I'm saying? And we have the mind of Christ. So if we have the mind of Christ, this doesn't overrule our decisions means that we're not making poor decisions in our relationships. We're choosing not to be angry. We're choosing not to be depressed. We're choosing not to be, you know, all these different things that we can have. So along with that, so this is what we sound, right? This basic problem that we have. This is the root where it started. Because in, in, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just go over this real quick. Genesis chapter 2, and in Genesis chapter 3, we have two scenarios. Genesis chapter 2 is before Adam and Eve ate from the tree. You know, with Adam and Eve. This is before they ate from the tree. It says that they were naked, right? And not ashamed. Okay? So what's interesting is that in Genesis chapter 3, after they ate, you still have this one naked. So I question, what does that really mean then? So here you have the same word over here, right? So this word in Hebrew, Elom, um, it means prudent, thinker, yeah, someone who's wise, making good decisions. Or I don't have to be wise, no one knows. Same thing. The other thing that we had in Genesis chapter 2 is dominion. And we're going to be talking about this more tonight. If they were okay with that. So in Genesis chapter 2, we had dominion. We were wise and prudent thinkers. This is what I want y'all to remember from tonight. Remember this. Dominion <coughs> is here with the wise and prudent thinking. Which is why we should always tackle our mind before we make choices, decisions, 
those types of things if we can tackle our mind, think properly, we will have dominion. You understand? Mm. So we're wise and prudent thinkers, and this not ashamed, we're not ashamed the first time. This literally means to be disappointed or unsettled. Okay? But they were not disappointed. They were not unsettled in chapter two. And in chapter three, we see a different Hebrew word. Now we see Elam. And this literally means helpless. Utterly bare. See that? Because we lost this, now we have this. So, in anything that you're doing, remember this is always the feeling that's behind everything. This is the state that's behind everything. So, and then you also have now they are ashamed. So now they are disappointed and unsettled. So this is this is what I talk about this when I go to my little timeline. This is what I'm talking about. And if you can understand that your basic feeling, everything stems from helplessness because the enemy took away our dream. So now you feel helpless, everything stems from that. So the next thing that we see, I was afraid, right? So we have fear. I know we talked about this last time, we were the snake, we were talking about the snake last time. The snake was also a wrong, right? He's a wise and prudent thinker too. Hmm. So we need to be. So fear came in. And then they were also ashamed. But you know something else? It said that they hid, right? I heard your voice, and I knew that I was naked, so I hid myself. And what's really interesting is when you look at Hebrew, that word hid means to harden yourself. You were hardened. You hardened your heart. So where did we see in the garden? We have what's in the middle, the tree of life, right? And what was the other one? Knowledge and evil, right? And which tree did we choose to eat from? Right, this is the one that they chose to eat from. So what did we find out this was a picture of? Because the law tells us all of God's goodness, the law is good, the law is holy, the law is perfect. We have to admit that you know you shouldn't murder, shouldn't commit adultery, shouldn't steal, shouldn't lie. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. But can we? But the reason why I talk about the garden so much is that it's a picture of our mind. The garden, the Bible tells us that the garden is literally a figuratively a bride, and we're the bride of Christ. So this is why it's prudent for us to understand our mind, because this is where it all begins. In Genesis, it begins in the garden, in the mind. So here you have a knowledge of good and evil, which is a picture of the law. What did they eat? Remember, what did they do? They ate from the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. right? And just to help you, good in Hebrew is literally good, but evil is that Hebrew word ra. Right? Now I remember what ra is. That's right. <laughs> because you know what? You can have good thoughts about God, but you can also have dark thoughts. So you're on this balancing. Yeah. What's happening to your foundation right now? Are you settled? Are you on a rock that's not shifting underneath you? The sand's shifting? 
This is shifting fan. This is good and evil. So when they ate from the knowledge of good and evil, when they ate from the law. You know, it's almost like somebody had eaten an apple chain cigarettes, but if you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. So it's, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're not if you're not working and you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything at work. You're just doing but if you're out there living life, mm -hmm. then you're gonna be teeter tottering on the whole mm -hmm. good and evil, good and evil, good and evil all the time because you're out there in society, you're in life. Yeah. But if you stay secluded in your home and you're just fighting something, then maybe you can stay the straight and you're don't turn on your TV, don't turn on your radio. Oh. You really <laughs> yeah. think? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I just see y'all. I see question. other people, and I don't. I see them. I don't know them. I right. see them, right. and I see how they perceive or how they want to put on the, you know, the the the, the that they're good. Right. You know, and it's like, because yeah. <laughs> I know what's going on in my house. Right. What's going on in your house? Like, do you have a TV? Yeah. Because I can turn on the TV and. I mean, whether or not, I mean, it's, you know, alcohol or cussing or a good movie, Hell's Kitchen, whatever it is, you know, that's not Joseph's, um, Joel Osteen, right. you know, I mean, right. and even the Joel Osteen, it, it, when he breaks and there's something in between, it's, there's a commercial of, do you want to buy this book? <laughs> and it's like, oh, do I take, a, you know, you know, what do I do? Do I buy this book? Am I supposed to buy this book? Is this good with chocolate that you do? Oh, yeah, that's just for attendance um, to the church and keep track of people. Yeah, it, just, yeah. it crosses well, my can, mind. Can it's we, like, can we, um, can we, can we go there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in real life, right? Oh, well, I'm going Okay. What is book you uh, use for our people? Um, um, the, the books that I have, I, I don't have them written with them. The books that I have are uh, uh, old studies, uh, work studies, and work studies, and I found them in the And I'll have the Hebrew in there, but it also has a dictionary in the back that tells you what the Hebrew word is. I didn't find the name. I don't remember. It's old, it's old, it's old, old Testament and New Testament are two different, two different books. If you want to see them, I'll bring them in. But I know you can get them on Amazon for like ten to twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Zonderman, Z O N D R V A N. Zonder. Thank you. All right. For people coming to this, if they, Rebecca and Martin is going to be have the information yes, how can we decide what the Martin is going to be? Okay. All right. Thank you. You will not be able to sign up. Yeah. So she she has a question about real life stuff. Like y'all want to answer that question about real life stuff. You know, do you really do you really have to seclude yourself and, and be in a place where it's just you and your little house and that's it? you can really hold it just what does it mean if you start to feel like that because you don't feel so much that you don't want to do it? You don't want to do that? People get concerned with that? 
Yeah. Well, number one, the enemy wants to support you. Remember the demoniac. There's a demoniac that Jesus actually traveled across the sea for. He was by himself. He was cutting. He his clothes off. Throwing himself in the fire. Nasty spiritual stuff. The first thing the enemy wants to do is cut you off. If he can get you alone, he's got your mind all along for himself. Mm -hmm. okay. So keep coming here. Whether it's this class or whatever any class. I can put that because I'm kind of partial. Um, <laughs> but the first thing he wants to do is to clear you number one. So now you shouldn't be sitting in your house being all holy by yourself. Um, we are meant to be with other people. We were meant to be with another person. Adam was not alone. God said it wasn't good for him to be alone. He needed a helper. Right? We need helpers. We need each other. You can't do this anymore. That's why we are a family of God. We belong to a family now, which means that you should reach out to your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Check on your brothers and sisters. See how they're doing. Have a word of encouragement. Get a word of encouragement. We've got to stay together. But do you have to live in this little world in order to be that way? Well, let me put it to you. Can I give you my perspective from my life? I lived in my own little bubble, my own little seclusion, because, you know, that's the way I was. I was a stay-at-home mom and had two little kids. I still had help in my life. You know, I saw this stuff going on. I was like, yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. That was my way of dealing with my hell in my life. It was easier to drink and forget about what I was doing. Well, no, I'm just going to drink some drink again tonight because, you know what? If I'm drunk, I won't kill myself. It's easier. Yeah. So does that make me holy? I'm so good. The only thing I really had in my life was my children, my husband. I did not want to go to church. I didn't want to go to church. What makes you holy? What's the new question? What does it mean? Christ. Made you holy. It's no longer I, but Christ who lives within me. If there's any one verse of scripture that you can memorize, it's Galatians 2 20. It's no longer I, but Christ who lives within me. So let's ask the question Is Christ holy? So are you holy? There you go. What does holy mean, anyway? Does holy mean sitting in your house, not watching TV? I personally, me, the way I let off steam, especially after Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I teach classes. Thursdays, like my let off steam day, I watch Investigation Discovery. Murder and Mayhem, all day long. <laughs> That's what I watch. That's how I let go. I'm like, you know what? I'm that person. They're helpless. You know? <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's what I like to do. Do I go to movies? Absolutely. I love movies. I'm going to see Age of Ultron from another human. <laughs> That's my gift from my children. I'm going to see the whole problem with my boss. Does that make me unholy? Does it make me unholy? Doesn't matter what I do. Matters who I am. And the enemy wants us to focus on our behavior rather than our personage. Right? Moses was a leader and a servant in the house of God. Okay? Jesus is a son. See, if you want to be under the law, you're a servant to the law. God doesn't want servants. You want to know why? You can fire servants. You can sell servants. You don't sell your children. That's why God wanted us to be the children. He wanted us to be in the household of God. So you're a child of God. Think about that for a minute. If you're a parent, you know, you understand what it means to love your children. My children don't have to beg me for food. You don't have to beg me for a house for the time. You don't have to beg me for a ride to school. You don't have to beg me for the things that they need. You don't have to beg me for clothes. You have more clothes than any child ever liked here. It's because I can bless them. I didn't, I couldn't bless them before, but now I can. They have more than enough clothes. 
Now God even put it this way. If you close the, what, the fields with all these beautiful flowers, and they're just here again gone tomorrow, if God is that good to the grass, it makes you think that you're less than the grass. You see what I'm This is busting doubt. The first thing that anybody wants to do to feel is that you are outside. How does he get you outside? This is where we got started. Did I answer your question? About being secure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we're getting ready to talk about. So when you eat from here, remember when they ate from here? They got hardened. Mm -hmm. This is what I was trying to do. They hid yourself because they ate from this, but now we understand that hiding yourself means to harden your heart. When Apostle Paul put it this way, he said that every time the law of Moses is read, a veil comes over here. Adam and Eve ate from the understanding of what's good and what's evil. And a veil came over your heart and you hid yourself. And actually, hid yourself from who? L O R. So do you know what happens to people who eat from the wall tonight? They actually get hard towards Jesus. And when you're hard towards Jesus, you're secluded. And when you're secluded, you are not How often is your brother in How often does he come to you that came to have to Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. I the yeah. I my family didn't know that I grew up with uh, my grandfather was not just working. You want to call fire animation? You can show that Bible. I grew up with that. Christmas trees were, you know, looked down on me, you know, down on my house. My grandparents wouldn't come visit us for Christmas because we had Christmas. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Easter eggs. Oh, no, no, this is about Jesus. What are we going to pay for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have Easter eggs. Okay. It's fun. Enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your life. The law tells you no, 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 no. Y'all have toddlers? I had a talk at one point. I had a talk at one point, and we did sign language with her. This is no in sign language. So be quick. No. 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 Don't touch. No. 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 You know what happened to me one day? This was all she heard. No. 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 You know what she did? I went over to say something to her. She goes, No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what it taught me? Yeah. This is not my child. Or am I doing wrong? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. When you place rules and regulations, we get rebellion. When the law came in, remember what happened? This is the first thing we did. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, what did they do? Praise this golden calf that brought us out of distress. Right? Without him. They couldn't do the very first commandment. So anytime you bring the law into anything you've got going on, the enemy has all kinds of fun with you. Why? Because when they ate from here, what happened to them? What did God have to do? They left. Yeah. And you know what happened? They were separated from the mm -hmm. Yeah, they understood they were helpless. And then you know what happened? Fear, shame, anger, murder, depression. Ooh, because they couldn't be here. You know what was something that's interesting I was meditating on today? God says now that they, now they're like us to know that it's evil. So do you know what that actually means in evil? Because I was going to complain. No. Do you remember the question that God had for them in the garden after they killed themselves? Who told you? 
So if you see something that you are not getting in your life that you want, you have to speak it even if you don't see it. Because God's economy works this way, works on faith, right? And what is faith? And faith is being persuaded by the truth. So if you don't have truth, you don't have faith. Okay, okay faith is being persuaded by the truth. That's what faith means in Greek. But if you don't have, here's the thing about faith too. It says faith is believing the things that are not seen. Our world tells us you have to see it, you have to taste it, you have to touch it, you have to smell it. You know? Or is not about it. Sorry. I'm trying to keep the light. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, this is what we find is real. This is what our senses, our natural tells us is real. And you know what? The enemy lives in the realm of feelings. God lives in the realm of faith. So if you want it, you have to live in faith. Which means that even though I don't see it, I speak it. And when you speak it, when you see it. The world tells you, oh, I'll say it after I get it. Right. But God wants you to say it so you can get it. Because it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're you know, we're so worried about our what others would be like, oh, I told you she wouldn't. Or like my daughter. Oh my daughter's no Angel, look at her, she's no, she's over there. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, right. oh she's beautiful, right. she's perfect. You know, you know. Right. But yeah. So but here's here's the thing, our foundations. Our foundations speaks of what we believe in. And here Jesus also put it this way, is that the meditations of our heart, out of, out of the meditations of our heart, are all speaks. So whatever you're meditating on is what you're going to talk about most. Okay. So watch your meditations. And why? Why do we have to watch our meditations? Because remember, in the garden, everything is beautiful. Everything is perfect. Finished work. Right? Everything done for them, even if they eat from the fruit, even if they eat a fruit, they're seeding the fruit that would provide at least 20 more trees for the one they eat. This is God. You can find that. What did the enemy tell them? You lack this one fruit. But did they really lack this one fruit? Did you know what you said? It looks good. And good to make me wise and we're already wise. They were already smart thinkers. Well, this, um, this was um Eve talking to Satan. This is Satan telling Eve. Oh, oh. Satan telling Eve. Oh, but he doesn't want you to have this one. Kind of trick in the world. Yeah. And so she said, Oh, it will make me wise. So why did the only way you have? Made her think she yeah, didn't have what she already had. Yeah, right, right, right. How does this apply to you today? Um, right. The garden is a finished work. Right? Mm -hmm. It says that he created man out of dust and breathed his life into him mm -hmm. and then placed them in the garden. Dust is reproach. He says that sin is a reproach. 
many nations. So in your sin, you will be reproached. And God pulled you out of reproach by placing his Holy Spirit in you and put you in the finished work on Jesus Christ. Okay. And in Jesus, you have everything. Everything. We don't get enemy tells you, you're not holy. Look at what you're doing. Oh, you're watching that TV show. You're still going to say that. You're breaking the world. Look at you just like that girl. Look at your mouth. Yeah. Look at how you just yelled at your kids. Yeah. You just kicked your cat. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you anything and everything you can to make you. I got to eat some. Yes, now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Look at your behavior. <coughs> you need to be wise. You need to think about what you're doing. Because if he can make you feel like you're helpless about what you're doing and how you're feeling and how things are going, then you will do something like that. And when you do, you are working. And when you are working, God tells you. You see how that's like a Yeah. Why do you think he wants to remind you of this so much? Because when you're helpless, do you have that? So do we say we're in hopelessness? Like, like Lord, what is it? Is it like an AA or something to turn the power of the will of God or something like that? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like you turn it, when do we, do we say that? Like, Lord, I know I'm weak and all that. He's coming to me and waiting for it. Where do we do this hopelessness? Do you have the Bible says? Yeah. Let the weak say, God is Remember the word? Remember the word? Mm -hmm. When we went through, when we went through Gideon, Gideon was hiding in a long place. Mm -hmm. He was hiding because of God's wrath. But then we saw a picture of Jesus who showed up. You know what Jesus had done? The mighty man of value. Mm -hmm. Two opposites, right? There's a wimp, and God saying, "You're a mighty man of value." So, what was Gideon focusing on? certainly wasn't focusing on Jesus, but the minute that he turned and looked at what Jesus said to him, then things started to change for him. He went from hiding in the wine press to leading all of his brothers into battle. Mm -hmm. And each and every time he went out to battle, he defeated more and became stronger and became stronger in his faith. But the first thing he had to do is he had to get his perspective. That's the story for him. We, we don't have the right perspective most of the time. We don't. We, we, I, I can get up every day and I can think about it and I'm telling you, yes, there are problems in my life. But I know that I overcome those problems. So I have two choices. I can either eat from that problem and grow stronger, or I can let that problem overtake me and I can go right back to it. Which is why the enemy wants me because if he becomes a thief, this goes on the window. Something that just popped in my mind. Do you remember why he was kicked out of heaven? Hmm. Yeah. Why was he kicked out? So he was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be God. Yeah, we right. So where did he kind of take from us? Yeah. God gave this dominion to his children. So where did he come after? What he wanted. So how does this apply to you and me? Do you know that when the enemy does something and he steals something, do you remember we were talking about the 140% restoration? So where did the enemy steal? Dominion over earth, right? Over the creepy things, over the things in the sea, the creatures. That's what we had dominion over in the beginning, right? Where are we now? Yeah. When, you, when you lose something, this is where we were. We lost it, and we fell, and became helpless, which means no dominion at all. So if we're going to restore to where we were, we get here. Mm -hmm. that means that we'd be over the earth. But now we're inside Christ. 
So now we're over more than we had in the beginning. So do you know how this applies to you? Are you stealing something from me? He's stealing something to me? That means that he's going to pay. I understand you. I do understand that you are in the middle of it. Everything that you lost, you're going to have an account for something. Since you will add, you will, you will return one plus add one fifth to it. And then you find it. What have you lost? What have you lost? We just have to believe it. We just have to believe it. I'm just asking. I'm, 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 st- I'm, you know, like, like I believe, and I believe that God's been doing for me. Like, do I do I? Because I know, you know, I know. Um, but I'm still kind of where do I go from here? And things that do come up like that for um, wrong. It's like, do I just believe? I just believe that it, it's, you know, don't do anything about it. You know, don't try to get back. Um, yes. Yes. Right. So somebody's doing something to you. So you're dealing with people. Right? Yep. This is a relationship problem. All the time. With people. All okay. Time. Let's deal with the people thing. Um, I will bless those who bless you and bless those who bless you. Who's doing it? Follow me. Who's fulfilling our promise? God for you. What? When do we know when we're supposed to do it? I mean, seriously. Like, let me go. Can I tell them the story? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Troy let my husband, that we're not getting along at all and haven't since we got married, since I got pregnant. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, so um, he lets his friend borrow my car. Mm-hmm. Um, and the friend, I'm not really sure of, but then the guy, when Troy goes back on the road, he's gone. And so I'm like, when's this guy going to get the car back? He's supposed to be back five days, now it's been 12 days. So I call the guy, and I'm like, hey, I need to get some stuff out of my car. And the guy's like, oh, well, I'm not here. And I drive there anyway, and there's my car. I took my car. Mm-hmm. That the right? Then I go home, and I cry. I feel bad because I've taken my car, and this poor guy doesn't have a car now. Because he said that he got a ride from there. I don't know the truth. All I know is that I got my car back. No, that no, that was fine. But but what? But but, but but see, I'm 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 not even God. Was that the right thing? So what you're saying is that you're confused and whether or not you should have done something. Exactly. Like was that? Well, should then, I have waited? You want you want a Bible story? Mm-hmm. Every everything everything has to be based in the Bible or for me to understand it, live it, believe it, and have it good, right? So in the Bible, David, King David, mm-hmm. right? He had his family stolen from him. Mm-hmm. He had his family stolen from him. Do you know what he did? He inquired of God. Should I go after and get it for you to be with me? Yes. Go and take it. He went and he retrieved it. How did he know that this is a problem with God for you? Is it yours? It was, but I had the other one. I had Troy's. I was just scared. I was scared. honestly, I was scared because kind of, like you're so, dope and breathing. So, in other words, and... you've got this situation going on, and somebody's taking advantage of you. That's what, it's not That's what I thought, but now I don't know. Sounds like somebody is taking know. advantage of you. That's what it sounds like. It could be Troy taking advantage. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so do you know what? Do you know what we can do? Yeah. Place me in God's name and say, Father, I need to go. Should I speak to my husband about this, or should I not? And if you have keys to say something, and if you don't, go back to God and say, I don't have keys to stop talking to my husband, so therefore, you don't have the way to be very fast because of this. You want me to be very fast. I need to pay before I get the bathroom. Right. I mean, that sounds so good. Yeah. I, I mean, I was like, God, I stand behind my husband. I stand behind my husband. I stand. Behind my husband. I stand. Okay, we don't have the car. And I did it. And then, and then, and then, and then at the end, I fail. You know, it's like. Right, but you know, here's, here's the thing, women. Here's the thing. Submit to your husband. 
Not because they deserve it, but because that's not the way to be happy. Yeah. What? And if you got a way to protect you. And, I, and I'm not talking about being a doormat. I'm not talking about being a doormat. I'm not talking about being a doormat. You're created equal, and you can voice your opinion, especially when it's a decision that needs to be made for the family. You can voice your opinion and you say, honey, this is what I really feel, and this is what I really believe is going to happen. So this, you know what I'm talking about right now? This is trust. That God will handle your situation. You are so right. I've got a really bad husband, really bad. Like he's hit. He, because my daughter's, my daughter's two, just turned three. My daughter has cussed me because of my husband. But I did what you were just saying, and I did it, and it was like all of a sudden, it was like all of a sudden this, it was like something happened in this house. He he supports me financially, even though he gets nothing out of this, nothing out of this. He financially supports me. And even today, he said, don't worry about it. If you need some more money, I'll send you money. And I, Angela knows, I was like, I couldn't afford a meal yesterday. And then today he's telling me, don't worry about it. I got gotcha. you. All because it's like, I, 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 God, thank you. Thank you for everything. Remember the, what I was telling you? And it's true. The devil's having him pay for it. Right. Well, you know, here's what happens. Here's the thing. Well, if I want a biblical example of what happens, will you submit? No, you won't submit. Sarah. Okay. Do you know what her name means, Sarah? My captain. Abram was saluting Sarah every day. You know what happened, Sarah? I'm in the family. Go sleep with my name. He became a born in Israel's side and it is still a thorn. When you don't submit and allow God to protect you, you're doing it yourself. And you know what happened when you do it yourself? Ishmael's papa. Ishmael's papa. Can still can God still help you even though you think it is safe? Yes. The reason why I say submit is because I had a problem with it. And I didn't like submitting because I had an abuse in the first time. And I left them because I couldn't handle the abuse. I didn't trust God to do it, so I did something about it. And you know what happened? I have burden for me. I have 50 50 custody. That's my Ishmael. So I'm saying. Is God still blessing you, my Ishmael? Yes. The time that I do have with my children, even you now I miss you, the week that I do get with my children, I bless is out of the way 20%. I get quality of time. I need help with you. I don't miss you. The time that I spend with my children now is better than the time I have in my life. So I rest and I trust God even handle my enemy. And do you know what's happening since I've done that? The man who did everything to take those children away from me in the beginning, and I did everything in my power and my knowledge as my own attorney, every step of the way, five, five and a half years, I was my own attorney. And he had a free life provided to him by my husband's sister. And I had to handle all the cash well. I gotta work, I gotta work, I gotta work. God will be using a cross for the work of my hands. Do you see how easy that is? It sounds good. But I did not submit to God's help in my life. I gotta do this and God's gonna help me. He's gonna bless it anyway. No, 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 no. You know what I find in there how to do? Rest. You know what, Daddy? You love them. And because you love them, what do I do? You know it's best for me. And what's happened since then is God might have said to me, well, now call me and give me extra time. Mm -hmm. When before, he would do everything in his power to give me some things. He didn't need to be with you. He mm -hmm. was out of spite. Out of spite. So you can't tell me about resting and trusting God and submitting to God first. Do not help my situation. Do not help my situation. I told you, I've been there. And so, even now, I have an amazing husband. I have an amazing husband. I have a 120% husband right now. 
I understand that. 120% husband. So even with a good marriage, you can still have a couple of perhaps oh, yeah. You're going to have clarity to two different people, two different perspectives trying to live in the same household. You're going to have issues. It's how you deal with each other in those issues. Whether or not you realize that this is the basis of every issue you have in your relationships. This is why your toddler screams. They feel helpless and they don't have the mind of Christ to understand. Mommy really is going to help me. Daddy really is going to help me. I have a God I can count on. That's why they need us to show them we have a God we can count on. And let's pray. Let's show you how to talk to God about it. Show them not this. Show them this. Do you know what it actually says about the Bible? Yeah, I, I, I was going to go in Revelation, but this is obviously something that God wanted us to talk about today. What's, what's really interesting is that this is power trips. Everybody in this world is on power trip because they all feel this, right? For sure. So everybody feels helpless. In your relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend, husbands, children, neighbors, friends, if you can help them understand that they're not this because they have a big problem, and you can encourage them, this now becomes a point where they come to you and they're the one you're safe. They're not judging them because nobody wants to be around and judge. How many of y'all like going to church where they're telling them all for you? Where you walk out going, I gotta try harder. I gotta, oh, I gotta knock that out of my life. Oh, I gotta get rid of that problem. Oh, I gotta, I mean, I cannot tell you how many times my husband and I have gone to church, visiting here and there, in Atlanta, here, all over the place. We would walk out of the church feeling worse than when we walked in. Because now you've got, oh, I don't want to do this too. You know what I'm saying? So this is why everybody feels every day. Even I can get that good. That's what I say. Even now, even though I teach you about dominion, doesn't mean that I don't have any problems. I just know who has me. Right? I know who I am. I know where I am. And I know that God promised me that he will make a good school. But what do I have to have a good school for? So I am. See? I'm not young. And he promises to be able to But I have to rest first. Right? The, the problem with resting means we have to trust. So then you can't see, taste, smell, hear, feel. Sometimes we can feel it's fair. Sometimes we can't. So what do you do when you can't? That's not real today. What do you do? What do you trust? We have this word in here. And we discussed this a couple of weeks ago, talked about it in First John chapter four. <laughs> We should sit on the throne and write for the Holy Spirit. God says that He will make your enemies more fit. That's a resting position. You are resting, God's working. So that's why the enemy is just coming back to attack your mind to make you feel helpless. And if He can make you feel helpless, guess what happens? Sickness, poverty. And we run all over you. you know, all kinds of things start happening. Because why? Because now you're cut off from the tree of life, and now you have to be careful. And because the garden, the garden of Eden, Eden means pleasure. You know what it says in Isaiah? It pleased God to crush Jesus. The finished work is God's pleasure. Do you want to be God's pleasure? Were there any enemies attacking them in the garden? Mm -hmm. They may have had something come in, but it doesn't say that it was overtaking them. They didn't have to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Somebody asked me this question one day. Well, were they doing something wrong? I will let it record it. You know what it said in Hebrews chapter 8? I will remember your sins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chapter 2, 
This is what God wants for us. He's the same today, yesterday, forever. Garden in chapter two is what he wanted from the very beginning. He blessed you with all of that. And someone came in and stole it. But in Colossians 2.15, it says that Jesus came and he disarmed the enemy. Disarmed him and made him a public spectacle. Triumphing over the enemy that they would use him. And actually, says also this, he said that if they knew, if Satan had known who was doing, he wouldn't have crucified him there for when you crucify Jesus, it was going to cause us to win. See, I, mean, I, don't, I don't blame Jesus, uh, Satan for doing this stuff. I don't. I, don't. I see it as God's plan. Like, it, from the beginning, yeah, like it, he, he knew we were just going to speak with him. He knew we couldn't. Yeah. So he was, the whole time, he was like, well, Revelation 13 tells us that he was the man who was slain before the foundation of the world. Genesis chapter 2 is the finished work. He was already slain before he began his work. Do you know what I'm saying? And he took us out of the approach and placed us in the finished work. What do we have about this? You think the Bible is a book? It, it is, man. Uh, the Bible is just a guide. It's just a guide. It's just to. Uh, you know, like you need a map, you know, you have to go and find different things and you have to go through different trials and tribulations. This is a God. Mm -hmm. But when this happens, this is what you do. When this happens, this is how you act. When right. this happens, this is what they did. Right. right. And we see throughout the Bible, and I am back in Judges with the next thing that we do. When you go through the Bible and you look at what the Israelites are dealing with, Look at all the different things that they're having to, to struggle through, all the different enemies that come after them. And you see these things actually mean, then you can then apply it to your life and you know, okay, God did it for them, so he's going to do it for me. And, and what, what was really interesting, and God really kind of drove this home for me a couple of weeks ago, in 1 John chapter 4, he tells us that love, God loved us so much that he sent his son to die. So that we might live through him. And then he reminded me of what it says in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Who is he talking about? Jesus. So how do we live through Jesus? We live through God. The word out here, the word in the world. See what I'm saying? This, you know what's really interesting is that nothing comes out of your ears, right? Nothing comes out of your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the one opening that the enemy has to understand what's going on in here. Right? So that you don't do the enemy and do the what's inside this, you just do it. Not God. He's created, just like us. He's created. So, really. So it's just, it's just our conscious, it's just our thoughts from good and evil and life experiences and what we've been exposed to that's in here in our little computer mm -hmm. that are taunting us. Mm -hmm. It's not the devil, the devil's right. not in our thoughts. No, he has no idea what you're thinking unless you speak it. Yay. And here's the other thing, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1, it's all of us. That the angels are here as ministering servants, waiting to do the bidding of the heirs of salvation. So if you're not bidding them the word of God, how can it become them? On the flip side, if you're speaking something that's not the word of God, that's against you, you can think so. I'm afraid this is going to happen. That's it. He's always waiting in here, but I know it's difficult because we're not in the room. I know it's difficult because we're women, and we're ready to communicate. We have these little hairs on the inside of our ears, specifically for our children. We're born communicators, that is that way. Who was the one talking to us today? You do. So who do you think about the first? Us. Because we're more emotionally driven, more intuitive, happy women. 
interior people. Mm -hmm. So you guys have to ask because we're kind of yeah, the Holy Spirit is the only thing that we learn to the Holy Spirit makes the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. A lot of people, especially if you're raised like me, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you anything that's in the Oh, you breathe the Holy Spirit. You know that? I just want to know. Oh, I believe the Holy Spirit. No, you know what it is? The Holy Spirit is there to testify to the truth. The Holy Spirit that's in you right now is agreeing with what I'm saying. Even if your mind can't catch it yet, your spirit's going, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Break that down a little bit more, too, because I understand the Holy Spirit, but I guess I want to hear more about it. Right. Like, Holy Spirit, like what? The way you're saying. Give me some more. The Holy Spirit, the first time you see the Holy Spirit, there's the law of Bible interpretation. Every time you see something for the first time, pay attention because something's about to be revealed to you. So the first time you see the Holy Spirit is in chapter one of Genesis. God was creating, but the Holy Spirit was doing something with it. It was actually hovering over the waters. Where the waters is the word, the living spirit that lives inside us is the waters. So what was it doing? It was hovering over the waters. And in Hebrew, it's that rock cup. It means it is literally affected as a matter of the living journey. But we're in like a nurturing <coughs> So we know the Holy Spirit is a nurturing. But the other thing about it is that it's a feminine purpose. Did you ever wonder why did God have me in the room? Why am I in the room? Why did Because they're created in His image, right? Yeah, God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have the Holy Spirit in Hebrews in you. So then you go to the New Testament and you see the Holy Spirit there. It's Numa in Greek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you have with you right now, it says the Lord in the house for the Father. So we have God the Father, God the Holy Spirit is the Lord. And then we have a brother in Christ, who is also our husband. How can we ever be like his business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. You see what I'm saying? This is what God wants in the end of the woman. And the closer you are in understanding grace together, the closer you are to God. So a lot of times what happens in relationships is that you have this scenario going on. And I know because I went through counseling training, and this is what they tried to tell you. You know, you've got this little thing here, you know, and you've got a husband here, right? You've probably, if you've been to counseling, you've probably seen this before. So you've got the husband, right? And you've got the wife. And then you've got God up here. Okay? And this is what the world is doing. If you fulfill me, then maybe I can fulfill you. You see what I'm saying? And so when you do this, you know what happens? It's a train wreck. You get all messed up in the middle here because you know what? Now this person is depending on how I feel. And I have this expectation that when, you know, or let's put it this way. I have this expectation that when I come home, my wife is going to have everything ready. She's going to have the kids quiet. She's going to have my drink for me. My dinner on the table. Mm -hmm. House clean. I don't know what it is. Yeah. This is the way it usually is. So what's happening? All of this demand is going to her. Does she know this? There's an expectation here, right? So what does that mean? This is now a law. Remember what happens when we have a law? Rebellion. So the husband is now placing a law on the wife, or vice versa. My husband comes home and he's going to talk to me. He's going to do this. He's going to be proud. He's going to take care of the kids. And he comes home and he's on a hard day. And you know what? He's not doing what you expected him to do. So guess what? You place a law on him. You have this oh, holier than now judgment attitude. 
Just saying, y'all, that's the way it is. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, it tells us that the product of the sinful nature, this is it, the product of the sinful nature, the sinful nature, okay? And I think that's NIV. I, I still have NIV positive thought sometimes. The product of the sinful nature is the product of the flesh, maybe, in your Bibles. It says the product. The product is the result of this. And it says the product of the sinful nature is fornication, orgy, adultery, love, rage, anger, malice. All this stuff comes from this. You know what we do? We take this and we say, oh, that has to do with me having sex with people. We apply it to, you know, a sexual thing. It's not a sexual thing. This is the Greek word serps, which is flesh. That literally means what can be the Your yeah, flesh can be the thought that you have. But really, at the bottom of that, the root word is the Greek word syro. Or syro, I forget how it's pronounced now. This literally means to drag oneself. In front of the judge or punishment. Judgment. Every time you see someone, you see a girl, they try to look for something wrong. Yeah, she may have done that. So, what do you think is going on when you've got that happening in a relationship like this? You're looking for the flaw in your relationship. And when you find it, you move away. I found a flaw in your relationship, you know about it. <laughs> you know and even if we don't say anything about it, still up here we're going. Mm -hmm. So, it's still punishment. It's still punishment. Why? Because you're the judge of how that person's supposed to behave. Right? So now we're all sitting there going, oh crap, sorry, it's too bad. Oh, no, I'm not here. Because this is the word of me. You know what Paul says? I say when walk by the Spirit and you don't fulfill. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? What does it mean to have Christ there? What does it mean to have Christ? Why did Christ come? Because what happens here? Conscience, right? You want to remember what conscience is? Remember? It's a compound word, con meaning with, science meaning knowledge. So guess what happened when you're judging somebody? You're judging them according to the knowledge that you have. Whether they're doing good or whether they're doing evil. And what happens when you eat in the garden or eat from the food of good and evil? We will surely die. Punishment. Punishment is always at the heart. You see? Close connect. So should we be from strength? It brings death, everyone death. God really wants us to eat from this tree. Next week we're going to take this out of Revelation. I'll show you how to do Revelation for that I thought. It's really very cool. I know we have a lot of people in the community missing, so I don't, we've already gotten into this anyway. What, what, what do, I want to, I'm going to, I got a blank spot where I'm ready to write something for what does it mean to walk in the spirit? Okay. I'm ready. Walk in the spirit. What it means is always look at that person through the blood of Christ. That's what it means to walk in the spirit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm to treat people how Christ would do unto them as you want them to do to do, don't just. Right. 
sit there and judge right away or let someone else tell you something. Oh, you're going to treat them like that. But you know what? This applies to you, too. So, like, the state. Well, mm -hmm. not even so much that. Let me put let me put this into perspective. If y'all say that an abusive man is too much, it's not right. Someone who breaks the law is too much. There's no judgment. Do you see what I'm saying? We go to the court to get judgment. We go to the court to get our rights. If we didn't have a judge. In a courtroom today to punish a criminal, how much anarchy would we going to have? Right? We wouldn't be able to walk on earth. Oh, I mean, we wouldn't be able to walk on this earth because we wouldn't have what we needed, right? So this is the problem with this, is that this brings punishment. But because we did this, who is going to come? Her seed. Right? Yeah. Do you know what it tells us in Hebrews? It says that if the blood of bulls and goats <coughs> could have quieted their conscience, we wouldn't need Christ. But this is the whole purpose why we came. Because someone had to die. So where's an Adam and Eve? It says dying in Do you know how long it took Adam to die? Almost a thousand years. <laughs> He didn't know how to die. And see, the thing is, is that we 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 tend to, especially when we have funerals and things like that. I mean, this is something that you know, we have, I just heard recently. Well, God needed another flower. And you know what? We we think, oh, that sounds so beautiful. Yeah, she was a beautiful person. Yes, he was the one darling person. You know, we look at that and we go, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God didn't take that person. Who's the thief? Who's the murderer? Who's the thief and who's the murderer? It says that he is a murderer and he's a murderer. God didn't create that. God created life and life abundant. And Jesus said, I created life that they might have life and life in my life. And Jesus even said this in talking to Pharisees one day who were judging people. He says, You judge by what you see. I'll judge. Um, um, so you can wrap up soon and make the phone second. Um, um, yeah, we gotta get in that same No, 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 no. So I'll let that. Um, so how do we apply what you're talking about? Walking in the spirit. How do we apply that to the other situation? You know, I had to let go of my own because I thought someone would be punished. Because they did me wrong. They did everything nasty that they could, they did everything I they did that they could. They, you know, missed, abused, did everything they could to get that out of them. When I was doing everything in my book. So I said, mm -hmm. I can right. do the right thing because I was a Christian and I needed to make sure that I was doing the right thing. And if I did the right thing, then God would help me. The more I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I'm not like that. I'm like this. The more I did that, the more I trusted myself to be righteous and holy. The more I did that, the more I did that. What do you feel like? Well, I better not do that because God would like that. Mm -hmm. like that. Are you afraid that you're going to get punishment or do you not want to face that? Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be frowned on. I don't want to be like, you know, yeah. So wait a minute. Let's back up. The high priest. Okay. It says that Jesus is our high priest. So what do you say about the high priest? Remember, we had this. Moses was a prophet to the people on Mount Sinai. He gets here and goes here. Right? That's Moses. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. Aren't you? You're going to do that. Because I still, I guess, don't get it. I mean, I want to get it, but it just right. keeps coming back. But right, I guess I'm not getting it. But this is what I want you to think about. 
So try to remember this part of these. So the high priest went from you to God. See what I'm saying? The high priest is not represent God. He represents you. He represents you. Right? And the high priest was the one who took care of all of Israel. So God didn't deal with the people of Israel. You know what I'm saying? He dealt with the high priest. And the high priest was accepted from the people of Israel. So, what do you think about Jesus? Is Jesus accepted? He's so real. Because God didn't deal with you and with him, he deals with the high priest. The high priest speaks to him. He speaks to the high priest. I you know so for sure, you're sure that they're not sitting there, Jesus isn't going, Ugh, and I died for you. You know what it says? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it says? Do you know what it says in, in Revelation? What it says in Revelation is a picture of heaven. Mm-hmm. And it says that there's a rainbow around the throne. Do you remember the first time it's a rainbow? Yes. What was it? You know what? You know what it's like? Right. And you know what he says in Isaiah as well? He's talking about now, Isaiah 53, that's the suffering servant. That's a picture of Jesus. Everything that happened to Jesus on the cross, Isaiah was prophesying about it in 53. So 53, Jesus dies, 54, the blessing of God. So one of the things that God said is that to me, these are like the days of Noah, where I swore I would never again be swore. So do you remember the covenant that we had with Abraham? The covenant? I I I know covenant, I know I've heard it sometimes, but every time you mention it. Well let's let's do the covenant. So in the covenant in the old days, they didn't have contracts with papers, right? So what they would do is they would take animals and they would divide the animals in half, half here, half here, and the two people that were cutting the covenant would walk together in between the animals. And it signified that if I or you, if either one of us violates this covenant or doesn't follow through in what I said I would do, you have the right to cut me to pieces. No, I don't, I don't really know who he is. That's what it means. Who is that? It was when, when God was going to come in favor of Abraham's descendants. We are Abraham's descendants. Okay, so Abraham you know, and his descendants, and he's in the you know, animals on both sides. Yeah. And say again. And so, and so this is how a covenant was made back then. But this is what happened. Abram was expecting and waiting for God to physically appear so that they could cut this covenant together. Because God promised he would make this covenant. So do you know what happened? God caused Abram to fall into the reason. And then it says that the porch came and walked through by itself. We found out that this torch is a despised torch. It's good for Jesus. Jesus had a covenant on our behalf. So that we in our flesh wouldn't have anything to do with that covenant so that we can fail to follow it. Jesus was caught on the cross. Is that what I'm saying? I'm going to get into it. So in other words, the covenant is not the covenant on you. The covenant is the covenant on Jesus. Who's the word of God? The Father. Who do you want me to be a part of? Because he made you a good. So who do you want to see your family? He saw Jesus in the front. So Jesus cut the covenant. Jesus cut the covenant. Jesus is dead for the covenant. Every day. Every day we have to do this. Every day you wake up, you have a new opportunity to say, Father, please give me a verse now. Everything that Jesus died for, I'm asking for that verse to be in my life. Give me grace to be in my life. Give me grace to have the husband understand him. Give me favor. Give me favor on the shed because Jesus had favor as he is so real. 
everything that Jesus died for, I don't receive it. Why? Because it says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17, it says that those who receive an abundance of grace will reign. Will reign. But what's that receive? That's the one we just learned recently. Mom, mom. Oh, 40. There you go. Yeah. That lombano is to take hold of, to use for oneself. So you know what? Jesus wants to use the grace of God. Don't feel bad about asking him for it. It's what you find to do. I just, I think, I think what it is, it's really nice. Yeah. I keep talking and talking and talking. I just forget. You know, I wake up, my day starts, and then something happens, and then I'm like, oh, God, can you please help me? Or breakfast. You know, oh, the Lord, you couldn't eat this food. That's this food. You know, it doesn't matter. And then, boom, we're off to the, you know, mm -hmm. off to the races again. Yeah. And then, and then, boom, 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 boom. and then, boom, 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 boom. And then, boom, 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 boom. And then I realize, oh, wait a minute, you know, oh, I shouldn't have that to Tessa. I'm driving over, hey, Tessa, mommy, sorry. I should have listened to you, baby. I'm really sorry. Yeah, okay, all right. I love you. God loves us, honey. You know, and we just, you know, and it's like day, you know, day by day, day by day. And it just keeps going and going. And the next thing you know, it's been a week since I've seen you. And I'm like, I feel like my medicine has ran out. That I, I'm not living and breathing and doing anything. I'm back to old stuff. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Because it's our nature. It's our nature. And that's why we have to stay in the world. Because it might be so easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Angela, I love well, you. Yeah. I love you so I much. I love you too, honey. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm ready to get my kid. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, ladies. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. I love you. Call me if you need anything. I meant to call you the other day when yeah. I got home. I forgot I had an invited the 75-year-old lady over to the house. She was only supposed to stay for 30 minutes. She had stayed for two and a half hours. Then it was bad time, bad time. And then today we went to SeaWorld. Oh, All right. Awesome. Yeah, we, did, we did SeaWorld and Aquatica. Oh, Aquatica is yeah, awesome. We, we, we did SeaWorld for like two hours. I was like, oh, Tessa, I'm hot. Let's go to Aquatica. We went right across the street. I'm like, I'm making use of this pass. I'm getting my money for it. Bye. 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 So I guess that's just work fast today. Okay. It's okay. Cool. So, bye, everybody.